So the compact SUV segment has been increasing in popularity and they all kind of look bland to me. Seems like Volkswagen thought about the same thing and they came out with the blackout trim. Ladies and gentlemen, the Volkswagen Tahoe's blackout edition. And welcome, my name is Pat, and we have Brian behind the camera. We are the outsiders. And like I said, we have the 2024 Volkswagen Taos Blackout Edition. And this is actually marks our one year anniversary from reviewing vehicles. And that's why I wanted a Taos, because that was my first car I reviewed last year, the 2023 Volkswagen Taos. And now, thank you for subscribing and liking our videos because it definitely has helped us grow the channel which we have and we are pumping out reviews every week now that being said i love this blackout look because i'm not a big proponent of the chrome look i'm not a big fan of it so the fact that they came out with a blackout look piano black is a little bit hard to clean but it's nothing that looks as nice as this and you can also look at the blackout roof up there now what we have under the hood is a four cylinder 1.5 liter turbocharged engine that gives out 158 horsepower and 184 pounds feet of torque through a seven speed transmission it's capable of 1500 pounds of towing we have the all-wheel drive but it also comes in front wheel drive and i'll go over some differences of what you get from front wheel drive as opposed to all-wheel drive mainly you get more space and you actually get a faster vehicle, which is weird to me because you don't have all four wheels going. But that being said, the spiciness keeps on going. We got the 19 inch wheels, blacked out wheels, looks very nice, blacked out mirror. We have keyless entry with the touch of a button. Now, a lot of these features I think is key to mention because this is an affordable, it's in the affordable segment of the compact SUV. Now, that theme is gonna be reoccurring that just pay attention to all the features we get it and uh, you're gonna take a look at it. Now, if you take a look at the back here, now back here we have the four motion badge and we do not have a powered tailgate, so we definitely have to use our muscles to open it up. Once we do open it up, 25 cubic feet on the all-wheel drive, which is what we have, or 28 cubic feet on the front-wheel drive. Now, it also comes with a full-size, not a full-size, but it also comes with a spare tire, which is great because I like to change my flats by myself, and you can do that, and I'm tired of seeing repair kits. Pass-through is definitely a good feature but if you decide to you don't have enough room with the pass through put all the seats down 60 cubic feet on the all-wheel drive 66 on the front wheel drive model so this is where we're getting into the difference between the all-wheel drive and front wheel drive it's not about speed it's also about space now speaking of space let's go check out the back seat in the back seat, I love how much legroom you have, especially in this segment. You got 38 inches of legroom. I'm only 5'9", but that's still quite a bit of legroom for this segment. Door quality, I mean, it's not it doesn't have the nice stitching that it does in the front. It's just hard plastic, which I'm okay with because it's usually my kid that's back here, and he'll just make a mess of everything. I love the fact that he can still have some nice, cool ventilation here on hot days. That is key cup holders and check out this fabric brian we have some nice blue stitching accent all around that keeps going through so we do have some letterette fabric and some suede fabric and the seats are extremely comfortable so definitely definitely a good thing back here as far as comfort and quality let's check out the front here we are inside the captain's chair right here you can see right away that there's a lot of nice soft fabric as opposed to the back seat and it's got that nice blue accent stitching which i absolutely love and it has it on the seats as well seat comfort extremely comfortable in the front and i love the fabric it's like a suede kind of fabric and uh, the stitching everything is really nice about that we got a 10.25 inch display right here customizable also there's a colored line on there that shows you reflects what driving mode you're in whether it's sports or echo or eco whatever you want to say it 
Steering wheel, the steering wheel feels really light when you're driving. We'll talk a little bit about that and the drivability. And you have your regular stocks, lights, our control here by a switch, which is always good. I don't like controlling my lights through a screen. Speaking of infotainment screen, eight inches. I like how it's embedded in the dash. I don't like it when the screens are sticking out. But you guys tell me if you're a fan of the screen sticking out, if that's the thing. Or maybe you're on my side and think that it should always be embedded. It just looks classier. What doesn't look classier, or I mean, I guess it does look classier when it's clean, but this piano black, there is a heavy usage of piano black. Volkswagen, you need to change that because you can just see the smudges from my fingerprint. The good news is you don't need to have the piano black. They actually have a blue one that looks really nice and they have a gray one as well, uh, a little bit more of a, yeah, a grayish texture. Uh, not as shiny as the piano black. It does have wireless Android and Apple CarPlay. As far as the screen, I mean, it's pretty basic as far as what's out there. It's not the crispiest screen. It does react well. And wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, definitely a plus. Down here, we do have our age fast control, which is hard buttons, which I like quite a bit. But you also have the screen here. If you decide to go to climate control, you can have them on the screen. But I use the buttons. Let me know what you guys use. Wireless charging, wireless phone charger right here, as well as two USB-Cs and a 12-volt outlet. Definitely in a nice spot. It doesn't move. It charges very well. No problem here. We have your traditional shifter right here, and we actually have some poverty buttons because it's not the high line. We have the uh, or the SEL in the United States. Uh, you have your handbrake, on or on start to button, and drive mode select right here. So you can turn the wheel according to the terrain you're in, which is nice. And then you can push the button to change your drive mode if you want echo or if you want normal or sports or custom. I would just go with normal and sport because this vehicle actually has pretty good fuel efficiency as we'll see in the drivability and the seven speed transmission. I don't think and it would be quite frustrating to drive in an echo mode personally, myself, somebody who likes to drive a little bit more aggressive cup holders and the center console, all a good size. And uh, now let's go to, let's go see how it drives so I can tell you guys my thoughts on that. All right, time to drive. Let's give it some beans. And what does that give us? Well, you're looking at a 0 to 60 time in 8.6 seconds for the all-wheel drive and 8.3 seconds for the front-wheel drive. So now 185 pounds feet of torque uh, really goes a lot better with the front-wheel drive, which has the 8-speed transmission. Now, speaking of transmission, I'm going to drive right into it. We have the seven speed transmission here with the all wheel drive, and I'm not a big fan of it. I would prefer, much prefer the eight or the nine speed. Tell you what, because when I'm starting off a line, sometimes it shifts very well and it's very peppy. So this vehicle can feel very peppy and it can just put you, accelerate right through and no problem. And sometimes there's a bit of a lag. And that is because of the seven speed transmission, in my opinion, where it doesn't downshift when it, when you want it to sometimes. So the unpredictability of the seven speed transmission is going to be my, a big con for this vehicle. That being said, if you're looking at the front wheel drive, not only do you get to get six cubic feet more of cargo, but you get a better transmission and a quicker zero to 60 time. So if you don't need all wheel drive, this car is even a better buy as a front wheel drive. Now, if we're talking about fuel economy, it ranges anywhere between 25 miles per gallon and 32 miles per gallon, which is about 28 miles per gallon in, for combined. In Canada, anywhere between seven liters per 100 kilometers and all the way up to 8.8 .8 liters per 100 kilometers. In actuality, I am getting about 8.3 liters per 100 kilometers, equivalent to about 27 miles per gallon, I believe. Double check my map and comment below if I'm wrong, but that's, I think that's around where it is. 
which is actually pretty good not because for the compact SUV segment because there are some that have a better fuel efficiency but those are smaller even within the segment this is actually a quite spacious compact SUV so I think that the fuel economy is decent for its size also I want to talk about the suspension now you know if the transmission is a negative the suspension is definitely a positive sure it's not as uh, engaging as some I'm talking about the Mazda CX-30 for example it's a more engaging drive taking corners and such but you also feel a lot more of the bumps in this particular case for the Tahoe's it's geared towards more comfort all the bumps you feel a lot less it's very very good at absorbing and it's still not much if any body roll during cornering so that definitely makes it a really big plus ride comfort from the seat to the suspension uh, this is one of my favorite vehicle as far as that goes it's extremely comfortable also I just want to address some features that are now standard from the entry level and up and the first one is the IQ drive, which is the advanced driver assist for Volkswagen. It does a very good job of keeping you in within your lane, follow curves, and gauge the distance between vehicle. There's no abrupt braking unless absolutely needed, and it doesn't bounce between the lines within the lane. So it's very a very good system, the IQ drive. That is now standard. Another thing that's standard is the um, adaptive, uh, sorry, the rain sensing wipers, a heated steering wheel, and the automatic high beams. Not something that you can say about every manufacturer, so that makes this actually a pretty good value. Speaking of value, we're going to go in the price range. So in the US, it's the S SE and SEL trim, and in Canada, it's Trendline, Comfortline, Highline. So in the U.S., that price range anywhere between $25,000 to $35,000, and in Canada, between $30,000 and $40,000. My tester here is approximately $30,000 in the U.S. or $35,000 here in Canada, which is the SE with the Blackout Edition or the Comfort Line with the Blackout Edition, and I think that is the best choice as far as trims. It's the best looking one in my opinion and it has the most features it has the uh, IQ lights that turn when you are in a curve so it lights up the curve ahead of time uh, ahead of the curve sorry so they're they adapt in that way and I find that pretty cool and a lot safer at nighttime in these country and mountainous roads that I live on so overall as far as drivability Aside from that seven-speed transmission, which hasn't impacted on me too much, I still like how peppy it is. Uh, I just think there's a bit of unpredictability to it. Unpredictability to it. <laughs> Words are so hard right now. And uh, but the ride comfort is one of the best in this segment, if not the best, in my opinion, which makes it a very very good value i love driving this this car or this compact suv and uh you might want to ask yourself well what else compares to it well let's go over the competition right now now that we just saw how it drives let's see how it stacks up to the competition there's definitely a lot out there but i'm going to mention some uh more close competitors to this vehicle as far as price, fuel economy, and cargo space, which is things that usually matter to you, the consumer. So the Mazda CX-30 is definitely one of them. Super cross track, and let's not forget, Toyota's, Toyota's got the Corolla Cross in there. Now, this has more space than the Mazda CX-30 and the Subaru cross track, so there's more cargo space. It has similar space with the Toyota Cross. At this point, I think it definitely just becomes a aesthetics or basically which one appeals to you best. Because between the two, I find them to be very similar as far as fuel economy, efficiency, and, you know, 
practicality of the vehicle. If you like to be an outdoors person, if you like to get on the go, if you just have a family and you guys do stuff all the time, they're both gonna suit your needs. Personally, I love the aesthetics of this particular trim, the blackout trim. I like the look and the style and this cornflower blue color, which is the name of it. I don't know what a cornflower blue, a blue cornflower is, but Google that, get back to me. Men, tell me also in the comments, what do you like? Do you prefer this styling or are you more of a Toyota Corolla Cross kind of styling? Here are my final thoughts and my pros and cons about the Volkswagen Taos. I'm gonna start with my cons because there is one really big one and it could be a deal breaker for you. The seven speed transmission, as we saw when I was driving it around, is unpredictable. Now last year, if we rewind to last year's review, I was talking mostly about the turbo lag. But it's not the turbo lag, they seem to have fixed that, it's the seven speed transmission, which sometimes goes and sometimes does not. You can press hard on the gas and it'll just slowly accelerate or you can gently press it and it'll just take off. So it's a little bit unpredictable. It's a con and it's a big one. I understand that. Now let's get back to the pros of this vehicle. And there's a lot of pros. I'm gonna do my best to name you to my top ones. Style is definitely the blackout trim, the new trim this year. Definitely with the cornflower blue, I don't know what a cornflower looks like, but I'm assuming it's blue. And this is definitely an eye-popping, eye-catching vehicle, especially with a boxier look. It's not as rounded off as some of the other ones. It's boxier and I love it. Everything to do with the drivability, that doesn't have anything to do with the transmission, but even then, it is a peppy vehicle. It'll just go. And the suspension is tuned not to be as engaging as a Mazda CX-30, but extremely comfortable. It'll absorb those speed bumps, definitely absorb the potholes, and it makes it for a very smooth and comfortable ride. It's extremely comfortable in there from the seats to the suspension. Cargo space. How practical is it? It's very practical. There's lots of cargo room and it beats out most of us, most of its competitors in that segment because of how much space it has. And you get even more space, especially if you go with the front wheel drive. So those are my thoughts. You tell me that these pros and these cons set it above at the top of your list as far as the compact SUV segment that you were potentially looking into, I'm assuming that's why you're looking at this video. Or is it something that, you know what, you're gonna pass on and comment why. Why would you pass on this vehicle? Or did you enjoy this review? And uh, we'd just like to hear your feedback. Now we are a military veteran owned channel. I have, I have several tours, so does Brian. And we like to support other military businesses. That's why I'm wearing the Mad Hatter industry hat and shirt. It's a military owned company. We support them, check them out. I'll put their website in the description down below. And give us a like and a subscribe to help support us grow the channel. And that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for Brian and I, and we're gonna sign off and see you in the next review. If you do end up buying one of these things, remember to tell VW our commission is 50%.